Welcome back you guys. I'm Tassie and this is my Shaman Memoirs channel. So I know it's been a little bit, okay y'all, but it was the holidays. And uh, first off, I just want to thank you guys for watching my family and I are terribly reenacted skit from last week. So we were all together because I had family fly in from California for the Thanksgiving holiday here. And we decided, you know what, we have more people here. Let's go ahead and just do a skit. So it was really fun just preparing it all. It was really not well planned, I will admit. We just literally decided it. We had no idea how the scenes would happen and how we would reenact things. It was just, you know, like we just had this idea to reenact what happened and then we just went with it. Nothing was planned. So. You know, there was a lot of hiccups that we had. The bloopers, as you guys saw, I absolutely love the bloopers. That was my favorite part of the whole skit. And that skit, the whole point of it was when I told you guys the story about my sister and I, we were cleansing the home and how it all happened. Obviously, we had to change a few things just to make sure it would fit into the skit. So it was a lot of fun. We are planning in the future, you know, like other things that we could do skits of just because I have a younger sister, her name is GJ. She started her own production company. She's been doing um, a lot of like real estate, showing homes, and then she also does uh, food trucks and everything like ads and stuff. So you guys can check her out. I'll link her information below. She also edits all of my videos. So again, it is GJ Productions and you guys can find her out on social media. All right, so let's get into this episode here. We are going to go over a little bit of ghostly update and then we're going to talk about um, recently I had somebody ask me about bunzongs because they didn't have a lot of information on it and it dawned on me I don't think a lot of people know much about the whole theory and the whole story about bunzongs so we're going to get into that in this episode and then when I did my live you guys had asked me um, a question that I thought was really important to kind of go over and that was really about when you are tested by your spirit guides, you know, really just my advice, any words of encouragement for you guys. So let's get started. First off, ghostly updates. You guys may have heard me tell you guys the story, but I have a younger sister who has been hearing a lot of entities and she's been going kind of crazy over it. She's adjusted and she's doing a lot better. However, you know, is she still struggles a lot with it where she'll hear voices and um, basically you know it's one of those things where you know we've been kind of looking and talking about her situation I don't have my shrine up so obviously I can't go into the spirit world and do a whole shy -yai. I can only just see what my spirit guides will allow me to see when I don't have a shrine so what happened was um, this sister and I we tend to sleep over at one another's house a lot and then sometimes, you know, we'll sleep over at other siblings' houses together too. So the weirdest things happen when I end up sleeping because, you know, like that's when I really let my guard down. A lot of crazy stuff tends to happen. And in particular, this sister, she had not slept over at my home for a long time. And then one day she came over and she happened to sleep over. And when she did that night, literally, I was having a hard time falling asleep. It was too hot. I kept tossing and turning. And then as I was starting to fall asleep, I saw her spirit get up and she was talking to my boyfriend's grandmother who had passed away. And literally they're having a full blown conversation. Like everything is just dandy. Like, you know, they were asking each other, like, you know, it's been a while. I haven't seen you. Where have you been? So my sister was updating her in her life. And I'm sitting there like, like just, <laughs> Girl, you wonder why you hear voices, huh? <laughs> because this girl in her sleep, her spirit version, gets up and talks to spirits and ghosts. And that's why she hears them. So, um, I was irritated. I told them to basically, you know, be quiet so I can get some sleep. And then another time, we were actually sleeping together again. And literally, her spirit, because she's dead asleep, and I'm a really light sleeper. And so I'm laying there and I'm having a hard time falling asleep because I have a problem of trying to fight sleep at the same time because I'm just so used to always staying up. I tend to stay up around until like midnight, one in the morning. 
I'm just a night owl that naturally. So when I don't have to go to work, I'll be up until like three or four in the morning just because, you know, I just, I don't know why I more creative <laughs> late at night, but I am not a morning person, but I'll still get up, you know, but it's still something where I fight falling asleep for some reason. Anyways. Um, so literally I'm like about to doze off and then her spirit gets up and she's literally like propped up on the bed and she's like talking to me and talking to me and I'm just like, shut up. <laughs> like I just need sleep. Okay. And then another time she was sleeping over at my house again, a totally different time. And I literally heard her as I was falling asleep. She kept saying, Hey, Tessie, Hey, Tessie. And I'm just like, Nope, like <laughs> I'm not doing this. So that's pretty much why she hears voices because she doesn't know this, but she, her spirit likes to get up and talk to ghosts and she's very freaking talkative. Okay. Uh, yeah, but in case y'all are wondering, how can she stop this? This is something where you have to, uh, mentally mature and you have to learn how to curb that enthusiasm. <laughs> Because it is true, you know, this, the unconscious version of you is very different from when you are awake and some people may not know that. So that's something that you have to learn and develop. You develop it more so if you are a spiritually practicing individual where, you know, you can tap into the unconscious version of yourself so that you are aware. I don't know why, but I was just thinking of people who have uh, split personalities. So, you know, it's hard to send that message to the other personality because, you know, the other one disappears, but I don't really know if they share the same knowledge and same information because I don't know much about that. But, you know, it's basically tapping in and knowing how to relay that information to the unconscious side. And this, you know, like that's what comes sometimes when people have certain traumas or things that they're afraid of they actually struggle, you know, cause they don't know when they're awake, they don't know why they have this unknown fear, but it just happens to them. Right? So it's something in the unconscious and you got to unlock that and to figure out why you're afraid when you are awake. So that's kind of whole, the whole theory. And, um, I recently had my boyfriend's mom, she has a friend who actually asked me something about, you know, like spiritual related. And it was something along the lines of, cause they made it a very vague question. And it was kind of like, you know, what typically would a shaman do if there was something like what I just talked about, there is something that somebody has a fear of, or there's something wrong, but nobody really knows why this person does this thing. Right. So then I basically broke it down that usually what shamans do is we would look, go into the spirit world and look at the individual to see what happened, why is this happening and how would we resolve this if there is a way to resolve it. So, you know, like, um, that's what I kind of mean bridging the whole story here y'all about if you are somebody who's practicing spiritually, that is kind of how you can bridge that. <laughs> All right. And my last ghostly update you guys. So, I have not gone into an Asian grocery store in quite a while. And recently I went and made a couple in for my whole family. And so it was the weirdest thing because I don't even know. I, I can, honestly cannot tell you the last time I went into an Asian grocery store because usually what I do is I stock up on my ramen and then um, I only go back to an Asian grocery store if I need, if I'm cooking like an Asian dish, right? But it's probably been since end of summer, maybe that I was in an Asian grocery store because I buy a bunch of ramen during that time. So I did another ramen run and then I also bought stuff to make one and it's been a long time, but holy cow, you guys, there were so many ghosts. Like I, I came up to my sister and I was like, there are so many ghosts here. <laughs> like, cause then like my leg, I kept getting shooting pain in up and down my leg. I had to call my spirit guides. You guys, it was that bad. We had to do some magic and it was just, it's been a long time. Like it, I don't even know. Like it was just kind of crazy. And I, I definitely went into the Asian grocery store, not expecting it. You know, it, it, when I go to like the flea market, I am ramped up. I am like ready. Right. But for some reason, when I went to the Asian grocery store, I really didn't think about it. And it was kind of a 
surprise show <laughs> going in there. I, I couldn't believe it. It was very, very intense. And this Asian grocery store, I'm not going to tell y'all which one it was, but a lot of Hmong people go there, okay? <laughs> That's all I got to say about that. Okay, so on to the topic of bunzongs. So bunzongs is basically a female ghost, if you translate that from Hmong to English. And, you know, it's kind of similar, but not really, to the hag, the term of the hag. So it's essentially a female entity that is a bit unkept, unkempt, and they tend to do drastic things to haunt people, okay? So um, the Hmong old story that goes with bunzongs, it's basically something that our elders would refer to a lot. These day and age, I don't know many younger generation Hmong Americans who reference or speak of bunzongs. They do exist still, y'all. They didn't just disappear, okay? So um, first off, the traditional storyline is that bunzongs and tigers, they tend to go together. And they are typically found in like jungles, um, farms, forests, caves even. And so the story goes that back in, you know, China, Thailand, Laos, etc., a lot of Hmong people lived in like the mountainous areas and it was very haunted. And so a lot of males would ap actually have encounters with these bunzongs. So it's kind of weird because if you guys kind of think about, you know, like the male patriarchy with the Hmong community and the story of bunzongs, like, it's always a female with like long hair, but people say it can be a child. They can morph. Sometimes they're beautiful. Sometimes they're not, etc. And they tend to like hunt people down, um, kill men. And because typically, you know, if you think, if you put yourself in a mountainous time without a car and technology, okay, you're tr typically traveling alone in these areas and you're trying to get to your next destination before sundown. Okay. So then, people are afraid because they've encountered these ghosts along the way. And then you're going to have the flip side where some people believe that bunzongs actually protect women and children um, from like rape, uh, being attacked, etc. if they are traveling alone. So, you know, it's, it's just kind of weird in general, the whole storyline, but I'm really just going to talk to you guys about what I know about bunzongs as a shaman from my perspective and my experiences, because some people believe that they don't exist here anymore. And that's absolutely not true. So let's get into it. So the first thing is, um, some people believe that bunzongs are like a female ghost, right? To me, a ghost is someone who was alive and now they've passed on and now they're haunting you, etc. So to me, they are not considered ghosts. They are of another entity in that realm though. And the whole thing with the tigers, I want you guys to be very careful because bunzongs, they usually always travel in threes. They rare, I would not say they never ever, but it is very rare they would ever travel alone. So if you guys ever see one or two, look out for the third one, it's around. Because they are actually quite strong. These entities, they're actually quite strong, but they scare easily. What scares them? People who have magical powers, that is what scares them. And I'm gonna go into that a little bit here as well. But for bunzongs in general, you guys, they are not tigers. Okay, so some people think that they can morph into the tiger, etc., like that. However, bunzongs, they can morph, from what I know. They can change. The stronger they are, they can become beautiful. If they are not very strong, they won't have the capabilities to become beautiful. Now, they will try to morph and change to what may attract the individual. So, you know, a lot of people have stories of bunzongs being able to have like Hmong clothing on, right? Who are they haunting? You know, so you got to think of it that way, right? Because in your mind, they can sense, oh, you're going to, this is what is relatable to you. So that is why they can morph and change into that. Uh, so that's kind of similar along the lines of hags, right? So hags, they can become beautiful women, but underneath it all, they're really not. 
but they can also morph and change themselves to attract the other person. Fun zones in general, they can't, they don't have the ability though to just strike and kill somebody they would need a tiger so if they have a tiger around you better run because you know with the magical powers of a tiger yes they can kill you uh i'm just saying so you know keep that in mind other things to consider when it comes to fun zones is that um they can be controlled they can be sent <laughs> so um and that is that goes in hand in hand with people why they are afraid of people who have magical knowledge magical powers because since the i i, I want to say but the, like but since the beginning of time you know that is how it actually manifested so what my from my knowledge and my spare guides there is a story of a long time ago Somebody, you know, think of like necromancy, right? Somebody created this entity to purposely haunt and scare and hurt somebody else. Now, with that being said, you know, when you do certain types of magic like that, you know, you don't know what's going to happen in the end. And so they are now just here in this plane of existence and they can be controlled if you ever catch one. They like shiny things, okay? Um, they also like songs. So they do tend to come out at night. You know, I, I yeah, they do come out in broad daylight. I was going to say they don't come out in broad daylight. They do, okay? <laughs> so they, they do like songs and they like shiny things, okay? Um, you know, why would you try to catch one? They can do tasks for you, that's why, in exchange for something. But be careful, they are tricksters, but they will always uphold their end of the bargain. You are not allowed, one of the caveats to this is that you are not allowed to capture it forever, per se. The deal goes, and this is where it got messed up, okay, from the old story, is that you have to, it, it's only, once you manifest it, the deal is it comes but it will only do your task and then it's free to go. That is the deal. And that's what I mean by, you know, when you do certain magics, if you don't cover all of your angles, something crazy is going to happen. And that's what happened. So the individual who did this initially, they were not aware where they should have covered their basis. And the other end of the bargain was that it was allowed to go free. So, you know, you got to exchange things with it. Okay, I'm not telling you guys how to go and catch a fun zone. <laughs> I'm just saying that is the story and the actual legend of the fun zone story that I know of from my spare guides and how they came to be, etc. So that is actually um, what it was originally intended for. But, you know, I'm just saying, they like shiny things and they like songs. And just be careful if you're alone at night and you, you happen to be singing, okay? That, that's what I've also said. Oh, one other thing. You know that story about cutting your hair at night? So that kind of goes hand in hand with fun songs as well. If you cut your hair at night, they like to come and collect the hair. I'm just saying, okay? I'm not saying it still happens now. I'm just saying, if there was a fun song around, it could happen. Um, you know, they, they are still here, you guys. Don't think they are only found in certain parts of the world, okay? That's not true. It's not not true. Uh, it is the spirit world. They're everywhere. <laughs> oh, and I do want to let you guys know, they are quite playful. But you know they're scary, so it doesn't seem like they're playful. They're just scary. But they do like to play with children. Uh, usually they don't have an intent to harm a child unless they were instructed to, but usually they don't, that's not their intent when it comes to children. They can kill women, okay? It's not true. They are not just protectors of women and children. However, you know, they could, as a task, protect a woman or a child. I'm just saying. A funny story, okay? So this, I accidentally did go and see a bunch of <laughs> That's how come I'm telling y'all they exist still here. Um, you know, I have a problem where when I tend to think of things, I tend to 
accidentally go too far and then I'm right in front of them naturally I ran because I was busy looking at the cuffs of their outfit and the jewelry on them so you know I and then and then it lowered its head to look at me because then I wasn't paying attention to it and then naturally I ran <laughs> okay and then it ran after me because it wanted to play um, because you know it was in a cave and I found it anyways so I had to call out my spirit guides and then yeah it ran away but you know like that that is just what I'm saying if you guys are like me in your abilities protect yourself you know like just just look out the bungongs generally won't just hurt you but you know they're really scary you guys especially if they start chasing you too they're just really scary but I don't think they realize the extent of how scary they are so in a nutshell Tassie is saying bungongs aren't that bad <laughs> Unless they were sent. Um, but they tend to scare people quite a lot. They, they're they very scary. And if there's a tiger around, just run for your life, okay? Like, just run for it. Um, don't sing at night. Don't cut your hair at night. <laughs> okay, like, that is it in a nutshell, you guys. The last part of this video here, I wanted to touch base on those who feel as though they're being tested, especially by their spirit guides, um, through moments in their lives, etc. Especially if you guys are on your spiritual journey. So for advice, you guys, and what I recommend and any words of encouragement I may have for you guys, just know every single spiritually gifted person is always tested. They are always tested, you guys. The point of these tests, it is meant to break you. Okay, I'm not even gonna lie. They are meant to break and change you. However, the whole point of it is so that you become stronger. So the advice I have for you, no matter how utterly broken it may make you, how defeated, lonely, sad, etc., do not ever become vengeful or bitter. Because that is, it's meant to take you there. That's, that's the whole point, you guys. And only after you've overcome it and you've surpassed it, do you gain the gifts and the knowledge. Because, you know, the heavens are not going to give anybody a gift. Because, you know, if you don't go through these tests, you're never going to really fully understand the whole extent of it. And the whole background of it all. And that's how people will tend to abuse their abilities. Now... Is it foolproof? Absolutely not, you know, because, you know, like, like humans, people forget, you know, you forget about the pain you went through. You forget about this and that you can become bitter and you may not even realize you have become. So, you know, that is the whole point of the tests and you will constantly and still be tested. Even when you think you've passed your tests and you done, you're not done. I myself have been tested many times you guys many times in my life uh growing up you know like when i did the whole video about me growing up as a child the number one thing all spirits told me anybody who i came across they all gave me the exact same message and that was not to tell anybody that i could see and talk to them and anything that they taught me anything that we talked about i was not allowed to tell other people so that whole point of that test, and you know, like so many of them told me, I just utterly believed it. I just, it was just the law to me. Like I just didn't do it. I didn't tell anybody. And so, um, with that all being said, had I told people, I would have been a completely different person to today. You know, I would have been absolutely used and abused for my abilities. I would have started my journey way early, you guys, as a child. And when I write my memoir of my autobiography, there's a lot of stuff that without the whole context, you may not understand when I say it, but there were a lot of things in my life that happened to protect me. I mean, think about it, you guys. I was born in an all-white world. Okay, we all are in America. But, okay, like, <laughs> I was taken completely out of the Hmong community. I went to an all-white church, you guys. We rarely saw Hmong people. And when we did, we freaked out, like, oh, my God, because we didn't know Hmong people 
you know, like what were the chances that it would come into a full circle and then I would become a shaman? So, you know, with all of that being said, it was meant to protect me until I was ready, you know? So you have to kind of think of it that way where a lot of these tests that you will go through, it's all meant to be something, but you won't always know what it is until the end when you come out of it. Another test that I went through when I was actually a shaman with my teacher, right? So I've mentioned this to you guys before, but my spare guides, they would always make me forget things around my teacher. And literally I looked like an idiot because everything would be erased and I could not recall it for the life of me. So then I started to write them down so I wouldn't forget. Well then when I was trying to explain it, nothing made sense. Like it just, I, I would just give up. Like I don't even know no more. Like. I don't know what this means that I wrote down. And all of that was, again, meant to not only protect me, but for me to learn. My teacher only teaches you so much. It's really your spirit guides that are meant to teach you, not your teacher. However, you know, growing up in an American world, I saw my teacher as a classroom teacher right? Who literally gives you a textbook, you study it together, they quiz and test you, you know, I literally thought that was what my teacher was. I had no idea that my teacher really doesn't teach me anything. Okay, So like, you know, bless her heart and what she has helped me with. But a lot of the spirit worlds, a lot of the inner workings, a lot of your travels and what your spirit guides look like, what they called everything like that, what they do, your spirit guides are supposed to teach you. It's never meant to be your actual human on this earth teacher. They do not teach you that. They teach you the customs, the traditions. They do not teach you the spirit world. All of that came from my spirit guides. So, you know, it took me a while to register that as well. Um, but, you know, like it was kind of weird because it put me through this debacle where I thought, you know, like my, my spirit guides don't trust my teacher because they're hiding all sorts of knowledge, right? They were just trying to show me it, it's not my teacher I should be going to. It is my spirit guides. Hint, 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 hint to all of y'all. <laughs> and another test that my spirit guides still do to this day, they test me like crazy through visions <laughs> because I suck at it. Okay, so like, I am great at hearing them, seeing them, okay? So the vision part, not so great because, you know, I don't understand their visions. Like a lot of times they'll show me things and I'm like, and, and I ignore them a lot. Okay. So they continuously test me over and over and over. And sometimes I still get it wrong. Sometimes I get it right. You know, it's just the vision thing. It's so subjective and you kind of like, you have to take it with a grain of salt. You got to learn to jump through the curves because the visions are very difficult to decipher, especially when it's something not meant for me. I'm like, I don't know. And I just like look away. <laughs> and I definitely attribute a lot of my, you know, like you guys have noticed by now. Um, a lot of times my motto or attitude is like, eh, I don't care. You know, <laughs> like, uh, for example, one time I was hoopling for somebody and I heard a lot of freaking like messages and it was just too much where I didn't care. And I just like ignored it, everything, <laughs> which sucked for the other person. But for me, I mean, my, I, I try to live like a normal person so much so when I am being inundated with so much spiritual stuff, I just like shut it all off because I'm like, okay, I'm over it. <laughs> like I'm done. But you know, I noticed that, you know, it's things that they're always still getting me to work on and getting me to practice because that's what I'm meant to do. I know, I know. Okay. You guys, but really I, I'll have like a whole dreams. Okay. Like if I don't do what they want me to do and I'm shutting them off because I'm like, okay, this, this is too much, right? They will come in my dreams. Okay. And then I have to relive it through my dream. And then when I wake up, like, it's like, I just go and I do it. And I have to get it done because it just won't leave me. And then when I'm finally done, I'm like, you know, if y'all just 
did it better, I would have gotten it a lot sooner. <laughs> but that's, yeah, that's kind of how it happens. I can't help who I am. So you guys know, you know, I get tested. You guys will all be, always get tested. It is just the nature of the game. And that's how you're going to become a better shaman, honestly. Uh, for those who get tested where they constantly get things sent and to hurt them, you're meant to go through that. You know, it's, I know it's annoying, but you know, you're meant to go through that so that you learn how to protect yourself better because you need to learn that. And that's why you go through that so much. You have to learn, you know, it's, so it's just all of these things, they are meant to break and change you. They, they really are. And you know, for me, when I became a shaman, you know, I've mentioned this as well. I saw it all. I saw people who, you know, really never gave a shit about you. And then all of a sudden they realize you're a shaman and they're your best friend. I've seen your best friend suddenly become so afraid of you. They're like avoiding you like the plague. Um, you know, and so, and then I've seen such great people come out of this, like such support in my life. So, you know, you go through a lot of ebbs and flows. You go through a lot of crazy, crazy dramatic stuff. And it's all of it you're meant to observe and learn from it, especially in your, your spiritual journey. Because those kind of things, it will happen to other people around you. And then they will come to you and seek advice on that as well. So just be aware that, you know, you're meant to learn. Like, take away take a step back and see what you can take away from the situation. What did you learn? And try to remember who you were before all of it happened. Okay. Because yes, we're going to mature. We're going to get older. However, you are meant to learn something from it as well. Or you're going to go through that test again. I'm just saying, okay, so you better learn. You better adjust <laughs> or you're going to get tested again. I'm just saying as well, you guys. All right. So that is it for this video. Until next time, you guys.